Um, they give you, um, this is the square root of x, okay, so you can see the graph goes across, and they're going to create a particular area, and they're going to rotate that, right? So I think they want, yeah, they end up being, this one's going to be a little more complicated than the simpler example that I just showed you. And this area here, it goes off forever, so they introduce a new boundary, and now I've got a finite area, just like I had a finite area. They had, uh, I had upper and lower bounds, they've got this. Oh and you can see what happens, right? Cool. Let me just rewind, because that was the critical spot. It's in the you can slow go it. Uh, let's go to here. Should I, can wait, hold on. Speed? Where's oh, the, yes, yeah. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, let's go in quarter, why not? Okay. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> just look again carefully. They take this. And to rotate it around, oh, well, I really did go really slow. Oh, there we go. Okay. okay. All right. So now we're going into another plane, <laughs> right? Whoa. Yeah, that frame rate, guys. Okay. And you can see as it comes around, you can picture the potter's wheel, right? That's what gives you the shape. Now, notice, unlike mine, oh, this shape has a hole in the middle. Why does it have a hole in the middle? Because it's already Yeah, very good. If you come back, <laughs> if you come back to here, right? <laughs> You see, the hole in the middle comes from this spot here, right? That's, if you like, that's air that's also being rotated around the axis just like this solid part is. So when you rotate that around, you get that hollow part, okay? So once you've got that, that's what gives you this solid, and that's what's being considered. So what we're doing with our drawing and our shading and all that kind of thing is to try and approximate that. Oh, yeah, you, can see, you can see what he's doing, right? Um, he's slicing it just like I did, and that's that cylindrical slice, just like we had before. Now, this one has a hole in the middle, just like I pointed out, but I would work it out in exactly the same way, because, um, I'm going to talk about this a bit later on, when you consider this one big shape, right, I can consider that as one big solid, and then I can take the solid in the middle and just subtract it. Just like we were doing the areas between curves, right? You're like, this integral is a one area, so you subtract another integral, which is another area. This one, you're going to have a big integral, which is the big volume, and that little integral in there, which is a small amount of volume, you're going to subtract them. Okay? We will look at those cases tomorrow morning. Now, let me just uh, give a caution. A lot of people, where's my other color, my danger color? Okay. A lot of people will write this formula like so. They will say volume equals, and they'll notice that the pi, the pi is just a constant, right? So they'll throw the pi out the front, like so. Now, mathematically, there's nothing wrong with this, obviously. In fact, I encourage you as much as possible, when you see constants in there, generally take it out, because it's just one less thing to worry about, okay? However, I'm going to strongly discourage you from writing it like this, and there's a reason why I put a big red box around this. Two reasons, number one. When you write it like this, it's really, really <coughs> painfully obvious where the numbers, where the pronumerals came from. It's a cylinder. You're adding up a bunch of cylinders that are all infinitesimally thin. Okay? So it's like, there's my pi r squared h. It's very obvious, right? Whereas here, it's like the pi just kind of comes out the front. It's like, where did, what, what is this? What is this? And the answer is, well, it's two thirds of the formula for the volume of the cylinder, right? Why not have the whole thing there? The second reason is, when people write it like this, <laughs> half the time, they forget the pi. Okay, because it's so easy to forget the pi. You're focusing on the integral. You're focusing on getting this thing right, and then integrating, la da 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 and you wouldn't believe the number of times people forget the pi. If the pi is in the integral, and you remember it as pi r squared h, you'll remember it much better. Okay? So, let's do a concrete example, shall we? Um, draw up a new set of axes, and put just, um, put this guy actually, Put y equals x squared on Okay, so I'm not going to write it out because it will take me a bit of time just to put it on the board. 
But the typical way you will see a question like this worded is, find the volume when the area underneath y equals x squared, that bit I've shaded in there, find the volume when that area is rotated around, and then they'll name an axis for you. Now, just as we're starting out, I'm just going to leave it on the x-axis, just like we did before. <coughs> we'll talk about what happens when you want to rotate it in different ways, but baby steps. Okay. What is the volume when the area underneath y equals x squared between 0 and 2 is rotated around the x-axis? Okay, And so that area will be shaded for you. Now, tip for beginners, in order to make your volume look a bit reasonable, okay, remember that this shape ought to be symmetrical about whichever axis you rotate. Okay? So if you've drawn your y equals x squared there, I would advise you to get your ruler, okay? and you can see where I put my 2 in, I don't know where your 2 is, right? but just measure up to where the 2 hits, the y intercepts, right? the y coordinate rather. Okay? Whatever that length is, so on my board it's... <laughs> on my board, because I have a ridiculous, it looks like 15 centimeters. I don't expect your diagram to be that large, okay? But whatever it ends up being, that distance, make sure you're roughly the same down here. Otherwise, you'll end up with a lopsided, ridiculous looking volume, okay? Once you've got that, that's kind of the most important point. You would do the same thing for your lower bound, but here, because we're on the axis, the reflection is itself, okay? That's where I'm going to go, and then you draw your this kind of thing at the bottom, yeah? Oh, would you re-say the question? Yeah, sure. Well, can I maybe re-say it yeah. at the end? The wording of it is not that important. And you'll encounter a whole bunch in the okay. exercise. Okay. So I'm going to rotate it around like so. I think it's good practice to put that bit in the back, make it kind of dotted like that, because your diagram is going to get pretty busy. And then you just need to reflect that shape that you have at the top down to the bottom. And there is your shape. If you like, if you want to make it a little more obvious, you can put some like round lines there to indicate, yeah, it's a round thing, okay? Seriously, uh, making sure that you communicate clearly through your diagram what on earth the shape is you're doing, very, very helpful, okay? So there's the volume, right? I'm going to form my equation, right? And here tends to be the way that I do it. I think about my formula, think about my formula. I know what my boundaries are, right? It's 0 to 2. And then I put in, here's my volume of a cylinder, right? So it's pi. Now, what is y in this case? I actually have a value for y. It's x squared, right? So I have x squared squared dx, OK? So there's my pi r squared h, right? There's my cylinder. Yeah. So that is a formula. We don't have to go through like, oh, there's a cylinder inside. Correct. Okay. When, um, when we have a look, there are other ways to find volumes that um, in extension 2 you will learn about. And then you have to be you have to go back a little more. But this is actually a two-unit result. You can go straight there. If you want, you can write this line down. But this line is kind of like it's kind of like Pythagoras. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. No one's going to give you any marks for doing that. Yeah. They, will, they will award understanding for using the formula properly. OK? All right, so that's that. This is the point where, having written down the pi, now I know it's there, now I take it out the front. So I'm going to stick that pi there, from 0 to 2 of x to the 4, and then this is just an integral. It's just an integral, right? So, what's my primitive? x to the 5 <coughs> on 5. I'm going to evaluate it from 0 to 2. You can probably see what's going on here, right? So this is 32 on 5, take 0. And there's my number. And just to be nice and neat and tied up in a bow, therefore my volume is, and this is where I'm going to stick my units on. And of course, they're cubic units because it's a volume. Okay? This is not complicated at all. It's just a natural extension out of, I can add up these things. I can add up those. I can add up these. What else can I add up? Right? Integration serves this purpose for everything. Okay? 